Google released a new deep research agent that beats other deep researchers, namely OpenAI, Perplexity, and Grok, which is called Deep Researcher with Test Time Diffusion. In this video, I'm gonna show you how this self evolving deep research agent works and how you can take it as a customized deep research agent for yourself as I'm testing it and running it right now in my environment. So, Let's check it out. This research is released by Google Cloud AI research team and what they are proposing actually is challenging the common method that exists as of now with other common deep researchers. So they're talking about the fact that if you think about how deep research agent works, they're actually challenge on a specific component which is the process is not like how human does deep research so if you follow this figure one they're saying that as a human researcher when you start actually thinking about an idea and starting searching some queries and getting some initial results you always evolve that initial draft of your research as you see what you can find and what you cannot find based on your search so you go back fix some stuff flip or drift your search queries and you might pivot the whole idea even when you are searching for a specific topic so that's why they're saying that we need to propose a new approach that act like human when it does deep research to give you an idea here are a couple of well-known deep researchers some of them are actually open source for example hugging face open deep research they just ask you, hey, what is your query that you want to do deep research? And they call some web search tools and give you the report. Or open deep research or GPD research. They just ask you, what is the topic that you're looking for? It is sort to create the skeleton of your draft. Like, for example, that you have instruction, introduction, you have section one, section two, and then you have conclusion or summary. And then for each section, they go and run some search queries to get some results back. Similarly, GPT researcher, it generate multiple search queries, go to web and give you the final report. But all of them, they are just having a fixed mindset that I have to create a draft, then I have to create search queries, then I have to go through internet and give you the final report back. It's not self-evolving and it is not really aligned even with how humans think about critical uh, researching. So instead, they started thinking about how we can create a custom deep research agent here that first it generates some planning and then a rough drafting then it is start to actually search to see what is available based on this draft that I have in my mind. And then I go back at it, revise, and I start to denoise what I have already created. So that denoising process, which I'm gonna show you in details, what does that mean? They call it diffusion process because it's like diffusion models when they generate an image out of a noise, they start to denoise actually that initial noisy estimation and that's how they learn to create images. Same approach we're gonna apply on the initial image that the sorry the draft that we're creating for deep research then we go back and make it better but through a self-evolving approach so what does self-evolving mean here so two ideas first i start denoising then i will at the same time do self-evolving so to just quickly summarize what does self uh, sorry denoising mean again you have the noisy draft that means whenever you ask a language model for a specific query that hey do deep research on this topic imagine this is your deep research agent First, it generates a draft just using LLM knowledge, not even going through the web. This is, we call it a noisy draft. Then on the top, we go and generate some search queries, find some information back and go and refine that initial noisy draft that we created. This is what we call it a diffusion process for denoising the initial draft that we created. But this is not just the only step. In parallel at the same time, when we want to do that denoising, I told you that we need to go through internet, do some search queries and get the responses back and merge them to create another draft to go back and denoise the initial draft. So within this process that we call stage one, two and three, we are doing some tasks and these tasks are self evolving themselves. So what does that mean? For example, the LLM beside that noisy draft, it also generate a research plan that how I should go and do research for improving this initial draft. That plan by itself can be refine and get better by using another LLM as a judge. The second stage, which is when you go through internet to first you generate some queries that what should I ask from web? Those queries can be even refined and get better when there's LLM as a judge that tells you if your search queries are good or no, make them better. This is a better so, uh, uh, query. Lastly, when I got the responses back, there is another LLM to check to give me a score, fit a score that whether the answers you got are of good fit based on the query that you have or no, go and search again. So these tiny components also are evolving themselves 
beside that denoising stage that I already talked about it. This is how they're actually showing that in the paper. As you can see, these A1, A2, AK, these are the initial uh, answers that I got from my web search queries. And in parallel, I will actually have another LLM, which they call environmental feedback, to give me a feedback. Are these answers good based on the initial draft, based on the search query that I asked from the web? If they're not, the LLM will give you a better proposal, like LLM as a judge here. So you go back, find more answers or different answers, even for the same search queries, and you iteratively do it all the way until you have satisfied your score, and then you match all these final found answers from web to add it to your next draft of the research. And then when you have these self-evolving stages happening within your stage one to three, which is searching, generating queries, searching them and refining them, then you go back and do that denoising that we already discussed. So you have now the final merged answers back. You go and check how was your initial draft that you generated? Is it your second draft, third draft or end draft? Make it better by the new search results that you found. Now to keep all these two process in parallel together which is denoising and then self-evolving piece this is the flow and how it's going to look like so let's just start it from scratch going all the way to the end first you ask your query that what you want to actually look for um, searching the web so this is your initial search query then immediately the steep research agent generate two things first it generate a draft of how your report should look like this is not a skeleton or something this is actually the initial version of your report and how it looks like it is just using LLM knowledge no web search here because it's just immediately getting generated in parallel at the same time it generates also a structured outline of how your report should look like this is called research plan that guide what we should search through the web now take it from here we got a plan so we go through internet do some searching and get some answers back and you can see these parts they have stars that means there's an LLM as a job judge sitting on the top of them to to refine them and evaluate them so you keep have better answers and better search generation and better research plans they are happening in parallel so after doing that iteratively I'm gonna have my final new draft report generation back I use it to go all the way back to do denoising and now that draft generation is now denoise and it's better so you do self-evolving multiple times you also do denoising multiple times how many times you have to control all right how about the results did they benchmark this custom deep research agent with other agent the answer is of course yes so here namely the the most competitive one which is open AIT research they were mentioning that we evaluated this approach they in short they call it ttddr they use actually two benchmark data set the first one was using some complex queries that requires producing long uh, long actually form of comprehensive report deep consult and then the second one they actually use some multi-op queries that require extensive research and reasoning to answer so with using these two in average they subsample around 200 queries and they show in the chart here clearly this TTDR, which is their approach compared to OpenAI, which is this light blue color, it actually is scored better with a more win rate compared to OpenAI one. So they showed this is actually certainly outperforming. Also, beside OpenAI, in the paper, they were mentioning that they check comprehensiveness, how helpful it is compared to other models for deep researchers, namely Perplexity, Croak, again, OpenAI, and you can see that dark blue one, which is this solution, is beating the rest among all different scenarios and here if you're interested they are saying that what type of language models they chose because their solution is just a deep research framework and it is LLM agnostic so you can take this idea and use any language model to create this custom deep research agent for yourself and they use Gemini models with different versions like 2.5 flash pro and then they compare it with some other models as we discussed and here are some uh, scores they found which is better compared to just even using Gemini 2.5 by itself viewing the research but using this framework on the top of Gemini 2.5 they beats Gemini by itself and also other models that we just named them at the end of the paper under appendix section they have also included a couple of prompts that they use for creating the C research agent so the sub agents that they actually doing refining helping to create better search queries calculating the fit score to see if that self-evolving need to go to another iteration loop or not so there are sub agents that they use google adk which is an open source framework for creating these 
a gentic deep research uh, solution so definitely good assets if you want to create your own custom deep research agent using the approach i think these prompts that they have highlighted is certainly helpful to you although they didn't release the open source code of the approach but they're saying that a product version of this work is available on google agent space if you don't know what this is this is actually a product on google cloud that's like a, a central hub for connecting to all different data sources to have a centralized rag and also hosting your agents here. And uh, it has a custom agent called Deep Research that is using this framework, which is built by Google ADK that you can utilize it. But when I was searching, I realized that in open source community, people have actually taken this paper and they implemented this solution, which is a Deep Research framework using some other agentic frameworks, like for example, LangGraph. This is the one actually I found, and if you scroll all the way down, I add the link of this GitHub repo to the Discord uh, channel. The link of the channel is under video description below. When you go there, there's a reference section. You click there, you will see the reference of all the videos I have created, including this one if you want to check the codes. So this one, which is pretty straightforward, what you need to do, you just certainly need to git clone what this repo is actually have in the URL, and you go to the, the path of wherever you have cloned this repo, and do some pip packages installed, then when you copy this environment value on running this terminal you will see this file that you need to add your uh, credentials so i realized that this sample is using openai as your language model actually to use but again this approach is language model agnostic you can use gemini or other models as the language model of your deep research agent then because OpenAI by itself natively doesn't do web search that's why you need to have another web search api like tavily for example to have that as a sample here to search web. But again, you can choose any other thing you want. And Gemini by itself has also web search if you use it through Google ADK. So you don't need to even go and pay or make subscription to web search APIs. And that's it. You just need to uh, run this chatbot.py, which I'm doing right now is start asking you, tell me what you want to search for. So I already followed all the path that I already talked about that with cloning the repo. And you can see that immediately asking me that, okay, what is your research? I just type, for example, which company stocks or industry uh, that are best choice for investing on the next year, just as an example. So you can see that it immediately started to, first of all, even improve my query. So these self-evolving components that I talk is started within even from the first part, which is your query as a user. Then it started to create some search queries to go to the web, like Q1 to Q3. It says that, oh, we're gonna do web search on this, but it's not just not just a state that it goes there and keep back and refine these queries as they get better or not. You can see that I actually added my Tavli API key. I didn't add some other web search APIs. That's why it's saying that DuckDuckGo or Naver, I think these are different web search APIs, didn't work because I didn't actually have any API for them. But if I scroll all the way down, you will see that it actually showed me some uh, calculated the scores of how good or bad my actually refined search queries or results are getting as I go through these iterations. You can see that first it wasn't that good, six, five, six, and gradually it's getting better. Fitness score eight, eight, and as I scroll down, you will see I generate more samples and also start calculating them, going through that denoising and self evolving the stage at the same time. So it's a set warning. But again, you are in control of creating your own even source code for this implementation. Honestly, if I want to do that, I will just take this paper, give it to a vibe coding tool with AI and just ask that, hey, create the or implement the deep research agent solution that this paper is proposing because it's really not complex. It's pretty straightforward and the paper is very descriptive. I'm pretty sure with your choice of framework and language model, you can just prompt an AI coding assistant and you have your own custom agent there. The idea was making sure you follow the approach when that they propose, which seems to be pretty promising. All right, that was all about this video. If you found it helpful, I would be very thankful if you click on like icon and make sure you share your thoughts, questions in the comment section below and subscribe so you won't miss the next video. Thank you so much.